Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very, very hot welcome to all of you. More than warm, you know, hot welcome even this afternoon uh, for this very, very important lecture on a subject uh, which should be close to all our hearts, but is somehow not getting the kind of attention that it should in our country. Uh, we will be hearing about Saving India's Endangered Film Heritage, a cultural necessity. We'll all agree that it's a cultural necessity, but what is being done about it is something uh, that is possibly not meeting the requirements of it being a cultural necessity. I'm sure our speaker for this afternoon, Shivendra Singh Garpur, will touch on some of these points and possibly also enlighten us with some of the real heritage that we have and the valuable heritage that we have in the realm of film and cinema. Uh, I would like to request Dr. Jayanta Shengupta, the Secretary and Curator of Victoria Memorial Hall, to kindly say a few words and welcome the uh, audience as well as introduce the speaker for this afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome to today's lecture on saving India's endangered film heritage, a cultural necessity. And it's a privilege and an honor for the Victoria Memorial Hall to have with us perhaps India's most renowned film conservation activist and the founder of Film Heritage Foundation, Mumbai, Sri Shivendra Singh Barpur. He is an award-winning filmmaker, archivist and restorer who passionately believes in the cause of film preservation and restoration. And the organization he founded in 2014, the Film Heritage Foundation, is dedicated to supporting the conservation, preservation and restoration of the moving image and to developing interdisciplinary programs to create awareness about the language of cinema. It is the only non-governmental organization in the country working in the field of film preservation. Many in this hall are well aware of the phenomenal work Shivendraji has been doing in this field as an untiring crusader. And some aspects of it were already showcased in the landmark workshop he conducted during the Kolkata International Film Festival 2018. But those who are, for those who are less familiar with his work, I should also highlight his work as an award-winning filmmaker. His first documentary titled Celluloid Man pays tribute to India's legendary archivist P.K. Nair. While celebrating the history of Indian cinema and making a fervent plea for its preservation and restoration. His second documentary, titled The Immortals, told the story of Indian cinema through the visual exploration of physical artifacts, personal spaces, and living memories. He has celebrated on two world class restoration projects with Martin Scorsese's World Cinema Foundation. The first is Budoy Shankar's classic film, Kalpana. And the other one, the eminent Sri Lankan filmmaker Lester James Perez's film, Nidhanaya, which premiered at the Khan Film Festival in 2012. Shivendriji was a donor also for the restoration of Alfred Hitchcock's silent film titled The Lodger, which was done by the British Film Institute. Shivendra Singh Dugarpur has directed and produced over 600 commercials, short films, and documentaries under the banner Dungarpur Films, one of the most reputed production houses in India. He has also been invited to be a member of, or has been elected to, several of the leading bodies that work in the field of motion pictures. I will mention just three of them. The Executive Committee of the International Federation of Film Archives in its 2017 Congress hosted by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences in Los Angeles, which gives out the Oscars. The Artistic Committee of the Il Cinema Ritrovato Festival in Bologna, in Italy. And the Honorary Committee of the Nitrate Picture Show, which is George Eastman House's Festival of Film Conservation. Today, Shivendraji is going to speak on the colossal loss of India's audiovisual heritage and also on the lack of recognition for film as an art form and an integral part of our cultural fabric. 
And most importantly, he's going to speak on the urgent need to preserve what remains of this heritage. As we museums and other cultural institutions keep grappling with the question of what is heritage and keep getting bogged down in a neat binary of tangible and intangible cultural heritage, what Shivendriji is going to talk about today is of huge, huge importance to us. So that's all I have to say for now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Shivendra Singh Dungarpur to speak on Saving India's Endangered Film Heritage, a Cultural Necessity. Yes. So before he takes the microphone, a small little memento from Victoria Memorial Hall. And uh, uh, assisting Shivendraji, we have Rohini Singh over there, who will be helping with the visuals. Um, thank you very much for doing that. And uh, we shall be extremely thankful to all of you. Uh, and I want to just remind you that after the talk is over, please do not forget to switch on your mobile phones again. <laughs> and also after the talk, I'm happy to answer question and answers. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, first of all, for all of you being here on this, as Mr. Rahman said, on a very, very hot day. But I want to thank you, Mr. Rahman, and thank you so much, Dr. Sengosa, for giving me to speak for the cause of film and our moving film heritage. And I'm particularly happy that this talk is happening at such an iconic institution. It's really, really an honor. You know, I couldn't have imagined that one day I would be speaking here as a child when I used to pass this wonderful, great heritage site and museum. You know, I'm often asked why I needed to start a foundation to save films. Do films really need to be saved at all? With a million versions across, you know, so many medias you have, surely films will survive in some form or the other. You don't need a foundation to do this. Many leading filmmakers in the country, in all their earnestness, have said to me that their films are preserved on YouTube, cloud, DVDs, hard disk. But more on that later. Let me fundamentally ask you, are films important enough in the larger scheme of things that need attention to warrant this kind of time, energy, and money to save them for posterity? You know, in a country obsessed with cinema, there are very few, including the film industry, who feel that films are really worth saving for future generations. And when we talk about film, unfortunately, the immediate association is Bollywood, Bollywood, Bollywood. Or business, or mass entertainment. We only see commerce and really fail to see the impeccable art in these so many wonderful films which we have grown up with or we've been associated with. What about the documentaries, the experimental films, the short films, the newsreels, propaganda films, television series, home movies? What about these wonderful forms of images that make up the basic fabric of our wonderful film heritage. Unfortunately, the popular cinema has sort of engulfed the public imagination. And we tend to forget that the moving image was one of the greatest innovations of the 20th century, changing our perception of the world and giving us the ability to capture a reflection of ourselves and the times we lived in. You know, as my great friend and one of the greatest visual artists, Tasta Dean, put it so beautiful in her petition to save films. She said, film is the Rosetta Stone of our time. What a wonderful quote. And, and you know, I want to remind viewers of this wonderful quote when, when you see Tagore, what he felt. You know, someone like Tagore, he saw the evolution of art in it. And just look at this. Uh, he said, 
that the principal element of motion picture is the flux of images. The beauty and the grandeur of this form in motion has to be developed in such a way that it becomes self-sufficient without the use of words. I hope the Bollywood is listening. Without the use of words. I believe that the expected emergence of cinema as an art form is yet to take place. We all know that he was, he was credited with Natal Puja. There's a lot of debate on that. But the great poet, thinker and artist had no doubt about the artistry and the unique language of the moving image. But nearly a century later, the film is still fighting for its acceptance as an art form. We believe that film is an art form that is integral part of our social and our cultural fabric. And yet we have to fight for the audiovisual medium to be considered to be part of our heritage. <laughs> is film to be damned because it's own, it not only entertains? You know, in, in this scenario, it is not surprising that film is I was just talking to Dr. Sen Gupta and I'm very happy to know that they're creating a film club or they want to show films. But film is completely absent from museums in India. Around the world, museums like Museum of Modern Art, Smithsonian, the Imperial War Museum. My friend Madhuja is sitting here. She was, she was asking for something to be done with one of the museums in Mumbai. When Tassita Dean came, she was, we could arrange a, a projector for her slide projector because none of the museums in Bombay had that and, and you look at the universities in America whether it's Yale, UCLA, name the universities they have outstanding film collections with film archives and they're not normal film archives UCLA film and television archive is the second largest film archive in the world they have their own war film boards, archivists regularly curate film programming the year round in India, you know, we have fantastic documentaries and experimental films made by leading artists, activists, independent filmmakers that are celebrated internationally but have no platform in this country. Many of these films are shot on celluloid and these are collections which should be maintained and showcased in museums. Now, I want to show you an image of someone whom I was really as a child had the opportunity to travel. I'm very fond of bird watching. And I, my father being an environmentalist, I had this great opportunity to spend time with Dr. Sunniman. And I was in conversation with BNHS. And these are how the films of, the, of Dr. Sunniman was lying. Uh, and the BNHS, you know, is a, sitting on a trove of the famous ornithologist Dr. Sunniman film that had been rotting away in a corner of the office for years as, some, as nobody felt. It was important that they need to be preserved or screened or educated. And for us, when we got into the picture, that was my own initiative to, to really go there and convince a board which lacked, we didn't lack, I'm saying, from the Godridges to the Tatas, the BNHS. And it's a very interesting story that they met me and they said the first thing. Can someone from Bollywood look at this film? And I was thinking twice that Bollywood, I just couldn't get to connect. And the president of the BNHS, uh, Mr. Homi Khan, said, Is this some, not somebody you, you're working with, Mr. Bachchan? Can they not look into this and things? And I asked him, Sir, finally, why are you asking? Because it's film. <coughs> and, and I was shocked. Just because it's celluloid <coughs> film. They could not differentiate between that old films means Bollywood. So what we are taking on a mobile today, should we call Bollywood for that also? I mean, it was, it was such a sad affair that for 30 years after Dr. Salim Ali's films, they kept it in the go down. And now all his films with notes written to be shown finally will, will have to be all thrown because they won't finish off. And that comes from the strong belief that they could not differentiate between the visual medium. For them, anything on celluloid is Bollywood. You know, and I, I have my theory. Sir, you're starting something on Gandhiji, but I have a very different theory on it. The father of a nation was a view that cinema was a social evil. You know, I have a wonderful letter by K. Abbas. 
Abbas Saab, the well-known Indian filmmaker, most of you will know, wrote a letter to Mahatma Gandhi in his open letter. It was in October 1939. And he said, To whom shall we, the sons of India, go for consolation and guidance? But to you, you whom we have come to love and honor like a father. Today I bring for your scrutiny and approval a new toy my generation has learned to play, the cinema. In a recent statement, you include cinema among evils like gambling, horse racing, which you would like to banish. In view of the great position you hold in this country, I may say in the world, even the slightest expression of your opinion carries much weight with the millions of people. I have no doubt that a large number of conservative and orthodox persons in the country will be confirmed in their hostile attitude towards cinema after reading your statement. There must be some great evil in cinema if the Mahatma does not approve of it. And one of the most useful inventions would be allowed to be discarded. And ironically, even today in the Indian constitution, cinema is mentioned as a state list. It's under section 62 in the seventh schedule of the state list, which deals with taxes on luxuries, taxes on entertainment, amusement, betting, and gambling. As a matter of fact, the current Indian laws dealing with cinema focuses only on censorship and taxation. And that is what dictates the interest and the dialogue of the film industry with the government. It's so unfortunate. I have nothing against uh, you know, Gandhiji saw Ram Rajya. And I'm wondering what film did he see that he started disliking it so much? Uh, probably. I wish he had seen Eisenstein and Podokkin and those kind of films, or there were people who could have shown him, his viewpoint would have been different. We celebrated a century of cinema five years ago. But were pioneers like Dasa, Falke, Hiralal Sen, Baburao Painter, V. Shantaram, not artists whose work must be preserved? Now, if you really look at this, if you really look at a film like Kagas Ke Pool, India's first cinema scope film, directed by Guru Dutt, when it was released, the film was not successful at the box office. It was only in the 1980s, you know, when it started being viewed in film society movements. And interest in Guru Dutt revived that people started showing interest in the film. So a film may be released at a particular time, but it is viewed differently at different times. And it is this timeless quality of cinema that makes it so important to preserve films. And I keep giving this example of Govinda. Who's, who's, who's a really Bollywood big star at one time, not doing too many films today, uh, or famous uh, is Fearless Nadia. She was actually uh, Mary, Mary Evans as she was called. She was an Australian who did very well with the Vadia movie tones. And if you really look at her, it, they, were, they were really regarded as C grade films, not even A, B. You know, Naya used to constantly, when I was wanting to use some of the footage, you would say, my God, you can't be watching those, those films. But she's become a current figure today. So when you're viewing something, when they were released, they maybe, they maybe looked at C-grade films. But today, they looked at some sort of a cult films. And that is why a film has to be preserved in order that people find new values in the film in another time. But why look back so much? Mansoor Khan, made a film called Qiyamat Se Qiyamat Tak. And he wanted to celebrate 25 years of Qiyamat Se Qiyamat Tak. So, so he asked, Likhi Aho Bhai film. Suddenly his production guy said, sir, here is the DVD, sir. He says, I never made the film on DVD. I, you mean to say that in my 25th anniversary, you, I'm going to show a DVD. DVD is, is actually a home video, you know, it's, it's, it's equivalent to what Super 8 or 8mm used to be. And theoretically, lawfully, you, you need to take special permission to show DVDs on a larger crowd. You know, in, in museum spaces and archives, it's fine. But publicly on making money, you're not allowed. So he said, I want, to, I want to have the celluloid. I want to see the film in the manner in which I shot. And said, especially when you're celebrating 25. But where is the film? There was no negative. There was no film. Gujar Sahib was given Dasa Falke Award. The government of India wanted to show Marches. How old is Marches? Yeah, 
But where is it? Where is it? It's gone. And we continue to, to churn out films at this incredible rate. Must we not care for the ones that came before and we have learned from? Now, I'm going to just show you a video which, which uh, while shooting Celluloid Man, um, you know, I was, I was actually walking in one of the suburbs of Mumbai in Pathanwadi and I was taken by this guy called Bipin Silver. His name was Bipin Silver and you will understand why his name was Silver. So have a look at this video which will give you an insight. <laughs> और पूरी पीछे लगी चार पांच हजार रुपए की और जहाँ सौ डेढ़ लेने के लिए आप तो दो सौ तीन सौ